money, getting that job, that relationship, that life you really want. Well, it could be thanks to your emotional baggage. We all have it and might not even realize how it's holding us back. Something Melissa Radke knows firsthand. She was in the seventh grade the first time she was called fat and ugly. Labels that would stick to her and define her for 41 years. Watch. Texas native Melissa Radke is full of personality and confidence. Go for it! <laughs> but she wasn't always this way. I think in seventh grade, I started to notice a dividing line between types of people and groups of people. In seventh grade, I started to notice, oh, we're supposed to fit in somewhere. And I didn't fit in anywhere. Radke says she was constantly picked on by classmates growing up, and the words they used made her feel defeated. They called me heavy, they called me fat, they called me ugly, they called me waste of time. After high school, she moved to Nashville to attend Belmont University and pursue a music career. Singing always came natural for me. I thought I would always be a singer because it was like the only thing that I could do. Um, and I didn't really have to work at it. It was natural. My family sings. I grew up singing with them around the piano and traveling and singing. Despite doing what she loved, the emotional toll of years of criticism always followed her, even at auditions. The middle judge got up from where he was standing, from where he was sitting. He walked up to the stage to where I was standing. He looked at me and smiled. I smiled at him. And he said to every woman in the room, and there was probably 1,500, you want to be on my show? You better sing like this. But you better not look like this. Next. On the drive home, Radke couldn't make sense of what happened. It made me feel sad. It made me feel rejected. It made me feel confused. I, I felt like a wasted life. Now at 44, Radke has finally left those feelings behind and is focused on moving forward. I'm just living it on the center stage instead of back in the back with the headphones on. Mm. And Melissa Radke is out with a new book called Eat Cake, Be Brave. And she's with us now. Melissa, thank you so much for being here. I'm so happy that you finally get to meet me. <laughs> <laughs> I love the audience shout out to the yeah, right? Before, before we even got talking. I, I, I know you say that you, sometimes you find it hard to find your place. And when that happens, when you're dealing with your emotional baggage, you would find yourself in seventh grade again. And I tell you, as soon as I heard, I was like, do you get it? Me too. Do, right? Do I you mean, feel that? That's where, like yeah. Something where somebody, you feel ignored, you feel like you don't fit in, and it takes you back to this yeah, because most seventh, insecure place. Seventh grade is where you start, at least for me. You start noticing the great divide. Everybody breaks off into these groups and you don't fit into one of them. What do you do? Mm -hmm. And it's no different at seven and seventh grade. It's no different at 12 and it's no different at 40. Mm -hmm. So what do we do when we don't fit anywhere? And so, I mean, come on, lunchtime, the lunchroom, help me, Jesus, that was terrible. Is it, uh, is it true you would go behind the bathroom stall with your... Yeah, I would take my lunch into the middle school bathroom behind stall number three, and I'd put my feet up on the toilet. And have you, have you ever tried to eat a tuna fish with your feet up on the toilet? Oh, no. <laughs> it ain't easy. <laughs> um, and what was terrible was that not only was I eating lunch in the bathroom every day, but I could hear the girls come in and make their plans for the weekend, yeah. things that I was never invited to. And I, and, and that was, it was a definite memory. I, I, I hung on to that for a long time. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. It's like taking me back to a dark mm -hmm. place in my own life. And I, I understand what you're saying. Those scars, they don't really heal. It takes a long time to get past that. I mean, that's the theme of our show today is right. how do you get past that? Oh, when I heard your theme was emotional baggage, I'm like, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Wonder why they ask me to be on here. I'm for you. <laughs> Well, and that's such a vulnerable time in, in your yeah. adolescence, in your in your you know uh, your path forward. That I just feel like those wounds are really tough to get past. You tried out for the cheerleading squad. How many times? Okay, now listen. In all fairness, I real I tried out three times and I never made it. But in all fairness, I can't turn any flips, and when I jump, <laughs> I don't get off the ground. So really. <laughs> And in, in Texas, fairness, I should not have made it. In Texas, they take their cheerleading seriously, yeah. too. It's like, you better be really good. Yeah. And I would, the, the thing was, I would go home and I would say to my mom, I'm going to try out for cheerleader again. And she would go, oh, 
no, you're not. No, you're not. Because in Texas, mamas are, they are very truthful. And yeah. she would say, Melissa, no, you can't dance. You have no rhythm whatsoever. <laughs> you know, I, you tried to turn a cartwheel, you broke my ottoman, you owe me $60. <laughs> and when you jump, you don't get off the ground, baby. You uh, ain't doing it. Uh-huh. And, uh, and I tried out three different times. I, look, I just wanted a, pl- I wanted a squad. Yeah. I just wanted a squad. I just wanted a group of people. And do we really think that seventh graders are going to heal themselves, that they're going to do the internal heart work and heal them? No. No. So you continue on in life with the pain that was laid there. Mm -hmm. You don't have the the skills to deal with it at that age. skills. And then, I mean, what's sad is, though, that when you became an adult, that kind of abusive behavior continued. You know, you you like to think that when you get out of middle school, that behavior is behind you, but... I think we all find out that. Oh, so bullies are not just on the playground. No, they're not. No. They, they can be. You, you work with them, and, they're, and, and sometimes you marry them. And sometimes you elect them president. And so, and, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to say, I thought, dear Lord, if she goes there, let her go there with me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, I want to pick it up w- with what we heard in the piece about what happened on that stage, which really makes me want to punch somebody in the face. Mm-hmm. And I'm hoping you're going to name names as to who exactly said that to you in front of those people. And that's that's the tease for when we come back <laughs> with more with Melissa. Thank you. We're back now with Melissa Radke, who is out with a new book called Eat Cake, Be Brave. So you get on stage with that rocket voice yeah. and you sing like that. And that jerk says what he says. Do, are we going to out the jerk? I don't even remember his name. I, I could, he could have told me his name, and I was so in shock in that moment yeah. that I, would, I don't, wouldn't have even remembered it. You are so fun and, mm-hmm. and funny and bubbly and warm. <laughs> but the truth is that this lifetime of, of really abuse did take its toll on you. You became very depressed. Yes. Oh, and, yes. And even suicidal at one point. Yes. You know, I likened it. Okay, so this is my analogy. Okay, it's not the best one in the world, but... I liken it to tattoos. Um, would you ever go into a tattoo shop and say, you know, my, this guy I just met on the street's going to pick out what I get? We would never do that. And yet my whole life, when these idiots would say these things to me, I would just mark my skin up with them. So it would say, you know, too big, too much, too loud, dreamer, waste of time. And I would, I, I would ink myself up with these remarks the people that didn't know me, they didn't know who I was, and I would wear them. And I started tatting myself up in seventh grade, so to speak, and I did it until I was about 40 years old. That's 41. a great point. You're right. We do allow these strangers to have that kind of power over oh, us. Oh, yeah. And not just in the moment, but for, for, for decades to come. You, so what, how do you turn that around? I'm sure there are a lot of people out there watching right now feeling those tats on them. Well, yeah. Oh, oh, gosh. And and, and let me tell you something. It affects how we walk, how we move. It affects who we love. It affects who we marry, what jobs we take. It affects everything in our lives. And so we're talking about emotional baggage. I had it all over my skin and we just carry it around with us. Um, My turnaround came the year I turned 41. Now, the year I turned 40, that was a party, Megan. You don't want to been there. Okay, (laughs) That was a party. So we're there now. (laughs) But everybody's there for 40th. Everybody's having a great time. The year I turned 41, I think I got like two shout outs on Facebook. And, you know, I I literally cooked a a roast that had been in my freezer for like 17 months. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's not too bad. I'll cook that. (laughs) I mean, I went to the mall and bought myself my own cookie cake. Now, are we depressed or what? So I but I did it and I and I um, got home, had my family over for for dinner opened up the box with the cake in it, and it said, Happy Birthday, Melissa. So they had misspelled my own name oh. on my own cake. <laughs> and that's my life in a nutshell. But it got to the point in the evening when I went to go blow out my candles. And when I did, now look, here's the deal. As adults, we don't really make wishes anymore, you know? I stopped making wishes when I was 16. I, I, I wish that my boobs would stop growing, and y'all see what happened there. So... <laughs> I had exactly the opposite wish. <laughs> <laughs> I went to, t- to blow out my candles, and my children were sitting here. Now, you have to understand, both of my children are adopted. This came after 12 years of infertility. So you've also marked yourself up with that. 
I can't do what every other woman can do. Totally. I did have a son. David and I had a little boy who passed away on Christmas morning of 2005. So then you have that, you know, a loser, loss, grief. So I have these two children, and they're brought to me by adoption, God-given. And they start fighting over my wish. They start, make a wish, tell us what it is. She can't tell us what it is. Yes, she can. She's a mama. She can if she wants to. And I'm listening to that, and I'm thinking, they're putting so much stock in this wish. Okay, I will too. And I leaned over, and I blew out my candles, and the first thing that came to my mind was, I want to be brave. I'm going to give it 12 months. I'll give it 12 months to be brave, to do what people said I shouldn't do, to try the things that they have always told me I shouldn't try, to, do, to step outside the box of what a, what a middle-aged, fluffy mom should do. If they told me to sit down, I'm going to get up. Yes. And that, that was the beginning of everything. That was the beginning. I will give it 12 months if they tell me to s stop singing, Melissa. I'm going to freaking sing louder. You better, you better be careful. And I did. I did. And, and can I tell you something? She, she did sing. And Melissa's new unscripted family sitcom yes. is going to be coming soon to our sister network, USA. She made it. I did. She did it. She changed her life starting with those 12 months of courage. And if you would like to try a little 12 months of courage, if you would like to try a little eat cake and be brave, um, you can read her book. And by the way, everyone in our audience is going home with a copy of it. <laughs> Melissa, rock on, sister. Thank you so much. You. We'll be right back. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.